country Out of the city where I belong It's been a long time since I could breathe more freely In a place where I can sing a different song Get out, get out of the city Back to the country start off talking about a local music festival, a two-day festival that's coming up in, gosh, just 10 days. Uh, it's called Everyone I Owe, and I'm here with the primary organizers of that show, Jesse, Shepard Bates, Joanna Champagne. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah. Um, so we're talking about a pretty good sampling of local bands here. How many, how many bands are on this bill? Ballpark. 23. 23. Yep. Mm -hmm. Two days. It's going to be right here in the Living Touch. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's not in this booth, but... Not here. No. Over good. there. Someone can come over here. Yeah. You want? Yeah, sure. Yeah. For sure. I mean... Oh, it's open. First come, first serve booth right here. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about why this is happening. Um, five years ago, it was June, June 11th, 2011. There was uh, another massive sort of gathering of bands, 18 some odd bands. We called that shindig Everyone I, Everyone I Know. And uh, you guys were there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we both performed in, in our former bands. Right? Mm -hmm. 
Man, time has changed. Here we are five years later. Let's talk about um, how this idea came about and why it was important for you guys to do this. Huh. Well, it just kind of started off with us trying to figure out a show to put together and talking about um, old bands that we miss seeing live. Yeah. And, and it would be great to, to see them again and, you know, just stuff that we liked. And I don't even know how everyone I know exactly came into the uh, conversation. It was a joke. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, we, both, <clears throat> we both played that show mm -hmm. and um, there was supposed to be an ensuing film. That yeah. never emerged, and we were still pretty sore about it because personally, I like nothing better than watching myself. Um, so <laughs> you're gonna get the opportunity here. Yeah, I know. I can't, <laughs> I can't wait. Uh, so um, that glory uh, never fades. Jo Joanna made a joke about uh, doing a show called "Everyone I Owe" for the five-year anniversary, and, and then it happened. <laughs> because we owe this scene a proper documentary that it almost got five years ago. Oops. Yeah, I think so, and and I think we owed. I mean, five years ago was great. It was awesome. There's all this great energy, and I think mm -hmm. there's, there's similar energy now. And uh, it's, I was it's, there. I don't remember having much to drink, but still feeling drunk. You yeah, know what I mean? I remember having a lot to drink and feeling very drunk. <laughs> but I mean, sincerely, there were 18 amazing performances, and mm -hmm. it was a very inspiring moment. So mm -hmm. let's recapture that inspiration. Yeah, actually, there were 19. Um, lest we forget Frank Woodman oh. Oh, right. uh, standing on the wall outside of uh, Logger House screaming, why don't we do it at the road at people? Why don't we do it? This was at the Logger House. The he Lager climbed House, up yeah. on, in the patio. Uh, yeah, that, was... Uh, that was one of my first memories of Caveman Woodman. Yeah, he was only so, about a year into it then. Yeah, um, but... But we uh, also owe something to ourselves. It's like yeah. friendship, supporting each other. Is that sort of part of the rallying call here? Yeah, I think, I mean... We, we owe it to ourselves and we owe it to people that really liked these bands and liked the music. And, and honestly, a lot of people were really psyched about um, that film coming out. Mm -hmm. um, and that's part of the reason we're, we're not only having the 23 bands, but we're, we're filming and recording all of them. Um, rather than a film necessarily, which could eventually come to fruition, but mm -hmm. we're actually filming every set in its entirety, mm -hmm. um, professionally mixing and mastering the audio and then giving it to the bands. That's outstanding. To do with mm -hmm. what, what they will. When did you guys start working on this? Uh, end of March, somewhere along there is when the first idea came up of it. I think so. Was there Probably. a mo was there a moment where you're like, oh man, I don't know if this was gonna work. Like, will this work? Well, I think yeah. Like initially, when I made the everyone I owe joke, uh -huh. uh, Jesse just sent out a couple texts like, hey, would anyone be interested in this? And we were just kind of laughing, and you know just an idea and then mm -hmm. pretty quickly you got a response mm -hmm. of old bands willing to get back together for one night like letter camp mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is pretty cool yeah um who else lightning love mm -hmm. satin peaches the satin peaches which are you gonna play with them on that night oh yeah all right we're doing our our five five piece lineup which we've done once all right there's a lot of band members shuffling and then we realized how much louder we could be with five piece and that was sort of the point of the band was I should you. say that you're both heavily involved with the music scene. You've been in bands before. You're in bands now. Hand grenades, Siamese. Talk about those bands too. Um, playing like in terms of playing yeah. the show. Um, yeah, we're really excited too. Like Siamese, we just kind of started, like got reborn maybe a year ago. Mm -hmm. uh, had some band member changes and stuff, and so. We've been playing out some and recording, and yeah, it's Great. really exciting to do this. Hand Grenades were recording stuff, right? Hand Grenades actually just finished an album recording with the same... It's official, we can say it? Yes, the Hand Grenades recorded an album. Mm. It's called Tunnels, and you can't hear it. And um, <laughs> Zach Ships uh, recorded, who also recorded Siamese, mm. and is doing the mixing and mastering for Everyone I Owe, all the live recordings. Um, right, right now, at this point in the interview, we can start scrolling other bands that are on, on the bill right now. These are the bands that are... They're going right below <laughs> us. Oh. These are the... Right here? Right. Can we put them somewhere. right here? They're going to be around that area. Because we don't need to name names. We don't need to say, oh, I'm the most excited to see this band. Because we don't want to play favorites. No, we don't. But um, what was the most encouraging thing about 
I mean, talk about talk about how encouraging that was, really, to get that response. To say, yes, you guys should do this. To say, yes, of course, we'll do it. What did that feel like? It was really exciting. Mm -hmm. It was really cool because I was excited that people were into it. And mm -hmm. then also just the idea of seeing some of these bands again. Mm -hmm. that has been so long. Right. Um, yeah, it was really great. Yeah. I think I think it was sort of a, a rallying point in, in booking the show, too, that like not only are we getting bands to reunite, but the bands that we... Our goal was to get the entire lineup from the mm -hmm. previous show, which is, is impossible because most of the bands are broken up. But right. some bands that are, are broken up, we were able to get the um, spinoff bands. For instance, Fur is no longer together, but Siamese is playing. Mm -hmm. Phantasmagoria is no longer together. Valley Hush is playing. So there's all this interchange, and it's, it's I think, as we were able to say, like, Illy Mac is reuniting. That no leads, favorites. That leads to... <laughs> Sorry. But that leads to maybe some newer bands being really excited because yeah. they've never been able to play with Illy Mac before. Now they're playing with Illy Mac. Right. And um, that's just one example. But uh, people were genuinely super excited. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so many people said yes that we had to make it two nights. All right. So I'm psyched. Great. Great. Well, uh, that's coming up June 10th and 11th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock? Seven. Uh, seven doors, both nights. Great. Find it on Facebook, and then go. Thanks for being here, guys. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Leah Deal is here to perform live on the Milo Show. Leah of Lightning Love is going to do a song that I requested from Lightning Love's canon. Thanks for being here. Take it away. Everybody knows I've got a job, but I never want to go. Rather stay at home. Lay in bed, watch TV.
Hi, Jeff. <laughs> hey, we're here on the Milo Show with Willa Ray Adamo. How Hi. are you doing? Hi, I'm doing fine. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Are you nervous? A little bit. I'm not nervous. <laughs> we're here to talk about a couple things that you do. Um, one is a band that you lead called the Minor Arcana. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other is Girls Rock Detroit, um, which we'll get to. But we should talk about that you just released your first record. Yeah. So, um, as the Minor Arcana, a band that started a little more than a year ago. Mm -hmm. But uh, tell us about the band and tell us about the two songs you just put out on your single. All right. Um, so I'm the singer-songwriter of the mm -hmm. group, mm -hmm. um, but we've, we're also featuring a ton of other really talented musicians. Um, on the record, we've got Kaylin Mitchell playing the cello. Cello. Um, Alexandria Berry playing the bass. Mm -hmm. um, Ramiro Romero playing the banjo. Banjo. Yeah. Um, we've got Aaron Strickards playing the drums mm -hmm. on the record, mm -hmm. and Craig Adams from The Witches playing the electric guitar. I think I got everybody. Did you just get everybody from shows? Did you just meet them along the way and just, hey, join my gang? I mean, it's quite an eclectic bunch of people. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it was kind of like, it was kind of like something sticky picking up dust on mm -hmm, the ground. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> just picked up more and more people. Right, right. And suddenly there was just like a gazillion people. Mm. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Talk about where you know, how your songwriting sort of evolved over the years, sort of like mm -hmm. where where you were two years ago and how getting these band players with you has sort of changed the sound, what it sounds like now to the audience. Absolutely. Where are you at? Um, well, when I was a teenager, I played in a band called Smudge Candy. Mm. I played a little bit out and about um, around this area. Mm -hmm. um, and that was like, just like basic garage rock group. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I started school, I left the area and I kind of started working on music solo, which mm -hmm. was really the first time I'd ever done that. Mm -hmm. um, and I put out a couple of small, small records in the past couple of years just by myself um, with a couple of people helping me. Um, but I kind of changed my sound in the past two years and now it's got this like weird Americana like cowboys going to a funeral mm. kind of sound but it's also it's very soulful someone described it as soulless soul I, like I really that. like that yeah I like that. to get something on vinyl it's amazing just I mean, to like be able to touch it that's the big step yeah no. that's like that's like that's like mm -hmm. an actor holding their oscar right i mean yeah. in this day and age absolutely mm -hmm. if if the actor paid for their own oscar <laughs> well <laughs> but um yeah no um, it's amazing the summer ahead what are you mm -hmm. looking forward to for my arcana do you want to get on some um, festivals do you want to do some shows do you want to tour yeah we're no playing pressure. yeah in june we're playing in grand rapids mm -hmm. with a really cool woman named amy Levere cool from down south mm -hmm. um in july we're playing in bay city oh, nice. which is fun for the hell's half mile film festival one of those events Good deal. um and we're also playing towards the end of the july we're playing feral fest mm -hmm. Um, which is like, I think it's three hours north. Okay. It's like a camping festival. So everybody will get to see my true colors. <laughs> things get very ugly when I camp. <laughs> so we'll see if everybody still wants to be in the band after they've camped with me. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> also in July, there's going to be, tell us about Girls Rock Detroit. There's going to be some summer camps coming up. But yeah. if you could introduce what Girls Rock Detroit is to the folks at home and, and how right. it got started. So Girls Rock Detroit is a summer camp. We had our first camp week last year. Mm -hmm. um, 
And this is for girls of all ages. Yes. To encourage well, them to pick up an instrument. I mean, what's what's I believe of the, the age range that we've narrowed it down to is eight to sixteen. Okay. Um, but, but people of all ages can be involved in the camp. Great. But our campers ages eight to sixteen, and what happens is um, they pick out an instrument, and we've got a whole week with them. In the morning, they take lessons on mm -hmm. their instrument, mm -hmm. like small group lessons, um, and then in the afternoon they have band practice. We form them into bands, and they right. get to name their band right. and draw a logo and make flyers for the show at the end of the week mm -hmm. um, and each band writes their own original song and then at the end of the week we have the big showcase where their friends and family can come and see them perform their original songs that's beautiful yeah. part of this is um taking away the uh intimidation factor right that some girls might feel about getting involved in a music scene that might be perceived as sort of a you know a boys game. Absolutely, yeah. yeah it's all about empowerment, and not only the campers, but I feel like um, the camp is completely staffed by female mm -hmm. identifying volunteers. So mm -hmm. we've got um, women who are involved in the music scene, bands, bookers, um, visual artists, right just to, people who have no interest in art and just like to support. Right. Right. <laughs> um, and I feel like the, those women they leave camp week feeling really empowered and ready um, to go out and accomplish things themselves too and do their art to the best you did can. one one summer camp last year yes two we'll do one in july yep. and august one at detroit institute of music education yep. dime one at dime and then one at wayne state it'll be in the old main building oh, beautiful which yeah. one july is going to be in i believe july is dime okay and august is wayne state oh we'll find out yeah. and then we'll just, we'll <laughs> yeah. just, there'll be all kinds of info scrolling below Absolutely, us right now yeah. um mm -hmm. but uh what do you find most fulfilling about working with girls rock detroit mm -hmm. um i've well i volunteered before we started Girls Rock Detroit. Mm -hmm. um, Girls Rock Detroit is part of the larger umbrella there are of cities. the Girls Rock Camp Alliance. Iowa City, yes. Chicago. Yes, there are cities all across the U.S. and now, um, like I think there's one in Australia, one in Iceland. Hey. Yeah, it's like cool. turning into a global movement. Nice. And um, I volunteered at a couple different Girls Rock camps, um, and so did a lot of the other organizers um, mm -hmm. before we started to um, formulate the Detroit camp. Mm -hmm. um, and what I really loved about it is um, just being able to connect with the girls and give them give them another picture of what their life can look like. Right on. You grow up, you go to college, you become a mom, things like that. Right. And um, I feel like just giving the girls like a look at some of the other options that they have and that they get to decide exactly what they want to do and that those opportunities are endless. Mm -hmm. And whether they actually want to play music for the rest of their life or they gain the skills and the empowerment and the mentality to say, okay, this is a new thing. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe I want to be a computer programmer mm -hmm. now, or maybe I want to code now. Possibilities. But I, I know that, oh, I picked up that bass guitar and I learned it and it was completely new. So I remember this feeling mm -hmm. and I know that I can overcome it mm -hmm. and apply that to other areas of their life too. So, Fantastic. Yeah. That's all I have. I just want to wish you good luck camping. Thank you so Hope much. Your band does good. <laughs> you want to come? You can come. Sure. Why not? <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Jeff. Cheers. <laughs> Yes. Cool. <laughs>
Yeah, no, I'm ready, dog. Almost quit town.